of the world you're logging in from. Welcome to you all to this Minla Zoom session. Minla meaning Meena and Lalit Soda. Meena Kagram, Lalit Soda. Minla has organized a Zoom session today and are truly privileged to be having an amazing guest speaker who I'm going to tell you about very shortly. Minla started these Zoom sessions at the beginning of the pandemic in the year 2020 in the month of April. 
Meena Ben and myself wanted to spread love, happiness, and gratitude all over the globe. We wanted to make sure that during the pandemic, people remain connected, happy, healthy, and well. And ladies and gentlemen, we are so proud to say today is our 47th consecutive session that we have been able to bring on guest speakers of all caliber from all walks of life, top celebrities, top gurus to give us that information and keep us inspired. And today, we are so excited to say that we have none other than our Swami Shailendra Saraswati Ji. Let me tell you about this wonderful speaker who is our guest speaker today. Swami Ji was born on the 17th of June in the year 1955 as a younger brother of Osho at Gadarvara in Madhya Pradesh in India. He is the fifth among six brothers and he's the 10th child. And being 24 years younger to Osho, he joined Osho's Neo Sanyasi movement in the year 1971. He completed his high school at Gadarvara and Swami Shailendra Saraswati joined a mandali in Gujarat and for three months, he distributed Osho's handbills to masses. After that, Osho asked him to discontinue the feature of Kirtan Mandali. Following the master's guidelines, he turned to his hometown in Gadarwara and he did his MBBS from Jabalpur University in the year 1978. He lived in Osha commune in Pune during the 1978 to the 1981 years. He got married to Ma Amrit Priya in May of 1979. He went to Rajneeshpuram in Oregon in the United States of America in the year 1981 and lived with Osho till the year 1985. He came back to India and served in the Orient paper mills at Ama Am Amalai in Madhya Pradesh as the chief medical officer during 1986 to 1999. He went to the Osho commune in Pune during the month of August until September 1990 during the last days of Osho leaving his body. Let me tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen, Swami Shailendra Saraswati with his wife Ma Amrita Priya have contributed in translating many, many books of Osho. After experiencing glimpses of eternal truth in April of 1998, he started sharing it with others by conducting meditation camps, stress management workshops. And for the very first time, he started giving public discourses, answers to questions from the audience, interviews to press media, etc. And since then, he is conducting various meditation and self-realization programs in India, Nepal, and abroad. He has achieved a lot through these years. But let me tell you, last but not the least, in the corona crisis, in the era of March 2020, where the world has seen so much changes, there arose a need for change in the way of imparting the knowledge and conducting meditation camps. In a full swing, online camps are being conducted and thousands of seekers of truth are participating from all over the world and diving deeper into meditation in the company of Swamiji, Swamiji and Ma Amrita Priya. So ladies and gentlemen, we are truly blessed, truly delighted to have a speaker of such caliber on our Minla Zoom sessions. Now, Swamiji, may I welcome you on Minla on my behalf? Welcome Namaste. Namaste to you. Namaste. Mm -hmm. I will request the senior lady, if I may call her, of the Minla Zoom sessions, the running pioneer 
the lady who zooms around the globe and makes sure that everybody remains connected. From a very small city of Nakuru in Kenya is our none other than Mrs. Mina Ben Kagram. May I request you to traditionally welcome our Swamiji on our Zoom session, Mina Ben. Swamiji, this is for you. Tilak and Chokha, welcome. This is for you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Over to you, Lalit. Uh, uh, Mina Ben, it's your uh, welcome. Yeah. Um, Please do not give me any sweets. I'm diabetic. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I won't give you. I like to give. Uh, global Namaskar to all. Jai Osho. Jai Shri Krishna. Jambo from Kenya. Karibu Sana. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Flamingo and Crater City of Nakuru, where Lake Nakuru is famous for wildlife and flamingos. Nakuru County is the one where world famous fastest runners like Eliud Kipchoge are born. My cute cousin Lalit and myself, Zoom Minla, are super excited to welcome you all and who have joined in today in this Zoom session and on Facebook Live. Welcome my son, Chairman Lohana Majan, Nairobi Bimal Kantaria. Very proud of your achievement. Welcome Namnit Vice Secretary Lohana Majan, Nairobi, who is hero of senior citizens in Lohana Majan. Welcome Swamiji. Sailendra Saraswati, authority on Osho Psycho Philosophy, my dream speaker. Can't wait to listen to you. Um, let me introduce Vivian Abana. Let me introduce to you our backbone of this session. Dr. Lalit Soda. He's a chiropractor, he's a professional speaker, he's an author, and he's a um, recipient of many awards, but he always say not to mention them. Recently, he's been awarded Marwa Journalist Award. Over to you, Lalit. Thank you very much, Meena Ben. Thank you very much for those kind words, and Swamiji, we move on to the next welcome you're going to receive from our president or the chairperson of the Lohana Mahajan Mandal from Nairobi, Kenya. This gentleman is Dr. Bimo Kantaria, a very young upcoming individual who's done a lot to serve the community at large, various projects that he's involved in in Kenya and abroad and quite an entrepreneurial personality in our Lohana community. A young person who's become a chairperson who's managing the community at large. So we have none other than our Dr. Bimo Kantaria, who would love to make sure that on behalf of the Lohana Mahajan Nairobi, he gives you a wonderful welcome. Dr. Bimo Kantaria, welcome on Zoom Menla. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Lalibai and Meena Ben, uh, Jesse Krishna and Jay Osho. Um, on behalf of the Sri Lohana Majan uh, Mandal of Kenya, uh, overall in Kenya, I wanted to welcome uh, Swami uh, uh, Shailendra Bhai uh, Saraswati. Swamiji, uh, when we found out that you're going to be a speaker on our session uh, on Menla, you will not believe the number of phone calls and, and messages we've been receiving um, and how excited people are to, to be able to, to listen to you. Of course, in Kenya, uh, the Osho movement has been very strong over the decades. Uh, many, many people over the years have been strong uh, lovers and, and believers in, in, in the Osho philosophy. 
um, in, in my own family, my my own wife is a is a is a firm believer in, in in the principles of Osho. So we are very excited and delighted and greatly honored, sir, that you are with us uh, this afternoon, this morning. Um, uh, as I said, we are, a lot of people have been calling us and saying, "How did you get hold of Swamiji on on this uh, on this such an uh, interesting topic that he's going to talk about?" Of course, well, um, Sri Lalibai is, uh, has talked about your history, very uh, you know interesting background you have. Um, done lots of things in your life, um, and for that we are truly grateful to you, sir, for for agreeing to be our, our main speaker today. And I, as as, as Meena Ben said, I think you're one of the most eminent and prominent speakers we've had on this session. So, on behalf of all of us in in Kenya, uh, all the uh, Luhana community in Kenya, really appreciate your time and effort, and and welcome to our session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bimal Bhai. <laughs> Thank you, Bimal, Dr. Bimal. Thank you very much. And we wish you a very pr prosperous uh, year and, and, and maybe more years with the Lohana community as the chairperson. So all the best to you. Um, I know this is your first year of presidency and all the best wishes from all over the world is coming to you. So wonderful. And with Swamiji's blessing, obviously things are going to be bright and beautiful. Swamiji, Swamiji here we start. I would like to give you just a few minutes to um, whatever you want to say, and then we will get into a very interactive session because our viewers have had amazing questions that they have put forward, and we would like to have an interactive discussion. Swamiji, the floor You can start yours. right from the questions. I have nothing to say. <laughs> if you ask something, only then I can respond. Otherwise, okay. I become empty inside, just blank. <laughs> no problem at all. Well, we've received so many questions from our reviewers that they were very interested in finding out a few things. So may I begin with the first question, Swami? Please go ahead. Okay. So our viewers are really interested in some who are aware of the Osha philosophy and other viewers may not be aware as much. So in um, just a few words or a few minutes, if you can discuss about the introduction about your brother, Osho, first, please. Okay, so not only my brother, but he's my beloved master too, and that relation is much deeper than the relation of brothers. He was born on 11th December 1931 in a village Kuchwala in central part of India. For seven years, Osho lived with maternal grandparents. Later on, he was shifted to Gadrawara, another town where my mother and father used to live. He went to school at the age of 10. And while he was studying first year in the graduation at Jawalpur, he became enlightened. The enlightenment means the realization of oneself. Later on, he completed his MA in philosophy. He was the university topper from the Sagar University. Later on, he became a professor of philosophy in the university, and he started teaching his ideas, which were very revolutionary. He traveled a lot, almost, we can say, 15 days a month. He was in railway train. He was going everywhere, talking to people. Soon he became very, very famous. Many of his discourses were printed and published. Remember, he has not written any books. All these are spontaneous talks which he has given, spontaneous question and answers which he has given to the public. Soon his books started getting translated in English. By year 1970, many foreigners started coming to see him. He started Neo Sanyas movement, giving initiation to disciples, giving them meditation techniques. He has conducted hundreds of meditation camps. He started conducting meditation camp from 1964. He devised new meditation techniques which are more suitable to the modern age today. And that's the reason thousands and thousands of people gathered around him. 
1974, he established an ashram in Pune, Maharashtra. For seven years, he lived there, and then he moved to USA. There two cities were made on his name. One was the city of Rajnis, and the other was the city of Rajnispuram. Almost 20,000 people used to visit there during the celebrations, and 5,000 people used to live in these cities. In 1985, he started world tour, which continued for about one year. In mid of 1986, he came back, came back to India, lived a few months in Bombay, and then returned to Pune Ashram again, where he continued preaching, giving answers to visitors' questions, and conducting meditations at the end of the discourse. On 19th January 1990, he left this planet Earth, but he is still living in the hearts of his lovers, his disciples. We can feel his presence all the time. So that connection is always there. And you, as you have asked about his biography, so this is just a small introduction. Uh, those who are interested to read the books on his biography, I will recommend two books written by Dr. Bashant Joshi. His sannyas name is Swami Satyavedant. He is also from Baloda, Gujarat. The first book is The Awakened One, The Life and Work of Bhagwan Sri Rajnis. And the other book recently published is Osho, The New Luminous Rebel. So these two books you can read to go in details of Osho's biographies, which is very, very interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that amazing introduction, Swamiji. Um, there were a couple things that you mentioned in your introduction that really uh, caught my, my ear. And, and you're saying that this was a very revolutionizing movement, if I may use that term. Uh, in what way, uh, if you can tell the viewers, was it so revolutionizing and why was it so revolutionizing? Because, yes, we have all heard about it. What is it that made it so revolutionizing? Okay, in very short, I can express like this. Osho presented, for the first time in human history, a combination of materialism and spiritualism. This he calls Jorba the Buddha, where Jorba is a Greek character which symbolizes materialism, science, money, wealth, health, long life, enjoying the life, the ordinary life. And Buddha is symbolic of spiritualism, meditation, prayer, going inward. So these are two extreme approaches towards life. The materialist is extrovert, spiritualism is introvert, but both are incomplete in themselves. So here comes the revolutionary idea of Osho. He says, both are not contradictory as it was thought in the history. They are complementary. And unless both are combined, we cannot enjoy the life fully in its totality. We are, as a human being, body as well as soul. We are made of matter and consciousness too. If we choose only one part, it will be 50%. The other thing will be missing. So the materialists are missing something and the spiritualists are also missing something. Both are incomplete. So Osho gave a very revolutionary idea of Zorba the Buddha, the combination of spiritualism and science. We need money also, and we need meditation also. We need, we need a healthy body and good nutrition and good house. Of course, that is needed. And we need something more. We need peace of the mind. 
we need the experience of blissfulness we need the experience of eternal soul so this combination is the very base of osho's revolutionary thinking thank you for expressing that and explaining that i was just making a couple points while you were giving your answer swami ji but moving on from that description you actually said we also need peace we also need blissfulness according to osho how would one achieve blissfulness or peace bliss is very nature of our soul it is not something that we can find outside we may have a comfortable house and a very expensive car but peace and bliss has nothing to do with anything outside it is the very nature of our consciousness if we go in dive deep into meditation we suddenly find that treasure of bliss is there so it is not an achievement but it is just a discovery it is not an invention it is there already inside each one of us so it is not something to be found but something to be realized something to be discovered within ourselves okay so that is a a great answer and how does one achieve that from within ourselves as i said it is a discovery we already know these two words we use in science invention and discovery somebody invented railway train somebody invented aeroplane these are inventions somebody discovered gravitation why we use the word discover because gravitation was present there already before newton was born it is not something new invented it is a discovery something which already existed and newton came to know about it similarly inside we have this treasure of bliss but it is covered with thoughts and emotions imaginations hallucinations dreams memories and so many mental jargon rubbish it is covered with all that when we become aware and meditative gradually it becomes uncovered all the thoughts and memories and dreams disappear as we become intensely aware of ourselves then nothing is there but pure consciousness and the quality of bliss the quality of peace is there so it is not an achievement i will repeat it is not an invention it is a discovery we already have it inside but it is covered with thoughts okay thank you thank you very much for explaining that so simply and so explicitly so once again thank you for answering that question swami ji uh, i had a message that has just come through would you mind repeating the names and the author of the books that you just mentioned about the biography of osho and the other book that you mentioned if you can just for the benefit of the audience sure please. his sanyas name is swami satyavedant he is yeah. a gujarati person from baroda and his legal name is dr vasant joshi and the two books which i have mentioned one is the awakened one the life and work of bhagwan sri rajneesh and the second book i recommend osho the luminous rebel Thank you okay, very next. much for saying that. I think a lot of viewers are probably interested in getting these books, guys. Make sure these books are purchased and make sure uh, these two books are read if you want to progress in the path of uh, what Osho is describing. So thank you very much. I'm just going to turn the conversation a little bit and ask you a different question. Yeah, how did you personally and your wife become Osho's disciples? and how did you come forward in carrying this message ahead i became a disciple in 1971 when i was studying in high school and my wife 
I also became a disciple when she was in her high, high school. We met later on when I was a student in medical college. We were celebrating Osho's birthday in a ashram there in Jabalpur. She also came there. I met her for the first time and we fell in love with each other. And we both decided later on to marry in order to continue spreading Osho's message. As you have already mentioned, I used to be a part of Kirtan Mandali, singing devotional songs and distributing Osho's booklets in Gujarat for about three months I did that. So that was my very deep longing. So I want to devote my whole life. So both of us, of, both of us decided not to have any children so that we can continue this work and we are doing it. We have been meditating regularly, morning and evening, particularly after o Osho's departure from the earth. We became more intensely involved in meditation and it happened about in 1998. I remember even the date, it was 19th January because that's the date in 90 Osho departed. So I remember the date. On that particular date in 1998, both of us hearing started hearing the divine sound. This was something unusual. And we both understood this as a sign that now it is time we should share our experiences of meditation with people. And from there we started sharing. So this is how we are still continuing since then. So whatever we could do, transcribing Osho's books, editing books, translating books, giving public speeches, going to the television shows, giving interviews. So in whatever way through, since the last 10 years, it is more social media has become very popular. So we are doing many things on that also. We are spreading Osho's message, his techniques of meditation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you for that explanation once again. And moving on to the next question, had a real, uh, a brief explanation, if that's okay with you, on how the Osho fragrance is continuing the teachings of Osho. How are you managing all this? I know you said social media, et cetera, but can you give us a little bit more onto the spreading of Osho fragrance, please? Okay, Osho fragrance is an institution. Me and my wife both are the founding trustee of that trust. And as I already said, in modern times, the media has changed. Previously, it was more physical books. Now we need digital books. So we have devoted a lot of time and energy to create all digital books, digitalization of Osho literature, which is big number, about 650 books in Hindi in English. So we have digitalized all those books. They are available just on a click of a link from the website Osho Fragrance. So anybody can read, anybody can download free of charge. Previously, it was a big problem. Many people complained that Osho's literature is very expensive because it was printed in a very high quality. So it was expensive. So now it is all free of charge. So this is one thing we have done. Similarly, few other friends have done the same thing with Osho's audio discourses. So all the audio, which is more than 5,000 in number, they are available free of charge from the website. We are running online meditation programs. One is going to start from tomorrow. So we have twice every month, one week program on every alternate week. So this we have been doing since Corona epidemic started. And we have been very, very successful reaching thousands of seekers from different corners of the world. Mm. Physically, we could never meet. This was impossible to do. So something great is happening in this pandemic. 
So many Osho lovers are connected. So Osho Fragrance is promoting these programs. I'm doing public speaking on different platforms. For example, Mina Ben has invited me for this and I'm feeling very happy to share my feelings. Mapriya is also doing the same. Today she is busy, otherwise she would have also joined me. She is busy on her music project. She is singing devotional songs, creating new music, and she has created more than 125 bhajans, the devotional songs devoted to Osho. Wonderful. Not only devotional songs, but something which explains Osho's philosophy. So she is creating meditative musics, we are publishing ebooks also. For example, Osho has talked on Vigyan Bhairavatantra, that is a scripture in which Lord Shiva tells 112 meditation techniques to Devi Parvati. Osho has given a long series of about 125 hours discourses, 80 discourses in English. So I have made that available in Hindi. So I have spoken the essence translation of these techniques and Mapriya has conducted the practical of the technique and we have made videos and audios for this. It was a huge work and now those four books are published as e-books on Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. So these are available on Amazon if you write my name Swami Shalan Saraswati on Amazon India, you will get all the literature. Recently, just few days ago, one book is published, Prem Ke Rahi, Baul Fakiron Ke Sang Tirth Yatra. The Baul Fakir, they happened in Bengal, the eastern part of India. They are very nice, funny people, dancing people, singing people, meditative and prayerful people. Osho has given discourses in English on these Baal saints. Mapriya has given the essence translation of it in Hindi. So now, not only the CD, but the book is also available, Prem Ke Rahi. So Osho Fragrance is doing all these kind of activities to spread Osho's vision. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a global viewing all over Facebook, all over the Zoom platform. And let me repeat what uh, Swamiji has said. Osho Fragrance is doing so much. This literature that used to be very expensive, you know what? They have made it so accessible at absolutely no cost. Visit the website on Osho Fragrance. Thank you, Mr. Ashe uh, Tendon. You put a message that visit the site. Do not miss out on these over 650 books that are digitalized. There, are, there is absolutely no charge for this philosophy that is being spread, the word that is being spread, the audio discourses by none other than Bhagwan Rajneesh himself. Ladies and gentlemen, do not miss out on this opportunity and log on to the Osho Fragrance website and download the books that you like. Swamiji, Swamiji that is so, so kind of you and so kind of the Osho movement to actually provide this literature absolutely free of charge. So once again, thank you very much for that. Great, moving on, um, there, you earlier mentioned that there are some programs that are available online. Uh, if one wanted to join on to a meditation program or is there something like that you're going to make available to all the people in the very near future? Yes, we are going to start the next program from tomorrow uh -huh. and there will be two sessions, 75 minutes each and the recording of the two sessions will be played again. It will be in according to Indian time in the morning, the live recording and then it will be played in afternoon as well as in the night. So people in Australia, in Europe, in America, everywhere they can see according to their own time. And the next program is going to be based on Osho's handwritten letters. This is something unique. Most of the Osho disciples do not know about it. Osho has been writing many, many letters. 
before 1980, that was the only medium to connect with people in India. There was no social media, hardly any telephone services. So Osho has written thousands of letters. Many of them are published in books, compilation of letters, but there are many which are unpublished. So we have decided to read that letter which is unpublished, talk about it, going in little details, supporting it with Osho's talk. For about 15 minutes, we will play Osho's discourse related with that letter. And then we will conduct the meditation, something related with that letter. In most of the letters, Osho has given some technique, how to meditate. So we will use different kinds of techniques. And this will be something new for all Osho lovers to see, to see Osho's handwriting. We will display that letter, the manuscript. And we will do this kind of. So this continues for one week. It starts from Sunday morning in India. So two sessions, I will display the phone numbers for WhatsApp groups to join. So I will just do a screen share of the YouTube channel, website, phone numbers, so you can note down. Please just wait for one minute. Sure, sure. We will do the screen share so that we can get all the information. Yeah. Starship Tandon, thank you. It's oshofragrance.org. O R G W W W Osho Fragrance dot org O R G. So thank you very much for displaying that. And also we are waiting for uh, some wait, telephone please. numbers to come up. Yes, that's okay. No problem. No problem at all. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't this an amazing contribution? You know, in a lot of different sampradays, they say that the guru lives in his writings. Well, Osho is here. And he is going to be living in his handwritten letters. So what better way we can experience the presence of Osho, but in his hastakshar, as they say, in his writing. Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers have been displayed on the screen. The slides have been shared. Um, great. Uh, perfect. OK, that is a slide in Hindi. And also the numbers are in English. Uh, I'm putting in English as well. Just yes. wait. Yes, no problem. Hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Usha, Ushama, if you want to just position the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm perfect. doing it. Perfect, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, all the details are on here. You've got the website, the email, the YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all the mobile numbers. Swamiji, if we may request, leave this slide here for 30 seconds so that every viewer sure. can have a glance. Sure. We will wait, wait. Sure. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, take a snapshot, take a photo of this, and save all the details on your phone. This is the best way to get in touch and get connected with all the work that Osho Fragrance has been doing. Wonderful. Thank okay. you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Swamiji. Okay. Uh, thank you. So we can Shaji. move on to next question. Yes, please. <clears throat> thank you. And we have stopped screen share. So that's wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, do not miss out on this golden opportunity that you have to download some good material that has been published by Osho. Wonderful. Now, in his work, Osho actually talks and emphasizes a lot about Sakshi, meaning witnessing the consciousness. Swamiji, can you shed some light on this particular topic of Sakshi? Okay, let us understand in a very simple way. Yes. We have this attentiveness, awareness inside us. We all know it. We are conscious human beings. Now, our consciousness can be either extrovert or introvert. 
extrovert person becomes aware of things outside him and introvert becomes more aware of the things happening in the mind in the thinking process the dreams and memories so these are the two worlds one, one is the physical world outside the real world and one is the mental world inside so extrovert focuses outside introvert focuses inside there is third point a witness witness of both this is called in hindi we use the word drashta or sakshi in english we can call witnessing or watchfulness if we watch our own self not the physical world all the mental world but our real self when the consciousness becomes conscious of consciousness itself when we become aware of awareness there is no other object pure awareness is there that is called sakshi or witnessing consciousness and that's the target of all meditations okay wonderful thank you for explaining that so very well and moving on from the witnessing the sakshi now just would love to hear what is the most popular osho method of the meditation technique that is okay, what there i are actually hundreds of methods mm -hmm. the most popular one is called a dynamic meditation in uh -huh. hindi we call it sakriya dhyan okay so i will just give a small glimpse of that sure. the first step of dynamic meditation is in standing position start fast and deep breathing chaotic breathing without any particular rhythm second step is catharsis or expressing whatever is suppressed in the mind whatever emotion comes whatever thought comes in that moment just express it so it's best to do in a closed room so you can shout you can dance you can laugh you can cry just be go crazy for 10 minutes be innocent like a small child and you will get rid of so much burden the mind and heart will be unburdened it feels as if we are flying in the sky because with the culture with education with sophistication so many natural desires are suppressed within they become like wounds so for 10 minutes just be free natural spontaneous and express there may be anger there may be sadness okay live it with totality whatever it is then it starts third step in which we shout the mantra who this is the last part of allah who the sufi mantra so who who both hands up and jumping and shouting who so these three steps continue for 10 minutes each then we hear osho sound voice stop and then just go frozen like a stone statue no movement at all now this is the real meditation be sakshi a witness a witness to yourself nothing is happening but you are become aware of yourself so this is 15 minutes and then the last fifth stage is celebration the bliss which you have felt within yourself now it is time to celebrate share with the whole existence so again with the music we dance express our gratitude towards the whole existence so this is the most famous technique dynamic meditation very very useful for modern educated person 
because he is more suppressed than our ancestors. The more we become educated, more sophisticated, more cultured, more repressed we become. And unless we remove those repressions, we cannot enter in. Those repressions become hindrances. They don't allow us to go in. I will again like to remind that real meditation is witnessing consciousness. First three steps are like epilogue in a book and preface in a book. The book itself, the real text is witnessing consciousness. Epilogue is the first three steps and the postscript celebration, the fifth stage. So this is dynamic meditation in short. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that little uh, insight into the dynamic meditation. That is the meditation that is most popularly recommended. Now, uh, Swamiji, if uh, if uh, if there was a, a standard meditation pattern that one wanted to use that children could do, youngsters could do, adults could do, older people could do, what is that one preferred uh, method of meditation that you would recommend? Okay, I will recommend not one, but three meditation for every age. For example, for children, playing with awareness, stop exercises, and Sufi whirling. These are three meditation, very, very enjoyable for children. Then dynamic, Kundalini, and Gauri Shankar. These three meditations for young, healthy people. Then three meditations for adults, Nath Brahma meditation, Nataraj meditation, and Kirtan meditation. For elderly people, I will recommend Vipassana meditation, Jhajain meditation, and listening to divine sound. We call it Omkar Dhyan. So there is not much to do, no physical activity needed. Even a sick person, hospitalized, he can also do it. Okay. Thank you. That's very nice. And in a very nice way, you've described that all ages can get involved in meditation. Thank you very much for that. Now, again, talking about meditation, I, I was just going to ask you the basic principles of meditation like can meditation be done anytime these are questions that came up so people were wondering can meditation be done at any time different meditation techniques are preferred in different timings for example dynamic meditation or any other meditation which involves fast and deep breathing pranayam is preferred in the morning time Meditation like Kundalini meditation is preferred in the evening time. Nath Brahma meditation can be done just before sleep or early in the morning. This can be done also if you wake up by chance in midnight, you can again do Nath Brahma and go to sleep. So there are different techniques which should be done at different timings. For example, Vipassana should be done before noon. Okay. If we do Vipassana in the night, we become too much aware and that may disturb our sleep. So different timings are recommended for different techniques. There is one book of Osho titled as Dhyan Vigyan. In English, there is one book, Orange Book. And another book is Meditation, the First and Last Freedom, in which all the techniques are described with their particular preferred timings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's very kind. So this clearly delineates what time, what meditation should be uh, done to get the maximum benefit of it. So there was another question also regarding meditation is how long does it take to practice meditation? A new beginner should start with three days. Any technique you do just for three days. Within a three days, you, you will get a feeling. If it is working for you, or you are enjoying it, then continue it for three months. 
that's the maximum one technique is useful then you may have to change the techniques so three days is minimum for a beginner if you don't feel good about the technique that means it is not suitable to you your personality your likings and dislikings your body your mind then drop it no need to continue so three day is just for trial if something suits you you feel peacefulness you feel something like a glimpse of bliss then that technique is for you continue it so this is the way to select a technique suitable and then once you find a suitable technique then at least give it three months time so it goes as deep as it can take you okay perfect you know we've talked about the types of meditation and what times we should practice meditation according to osho according to you what is the main purpose of meditation okay as i have already told to experience the peace the blissfulness which is our very nature to become more sensitive because meditation means awareness it involves sensitivity you become more loving more compassionate a transformation of the whole life pattern happens and there are divine experiences which are waiting inside when we go in we find so many divine qualities within ourselves so this is the purpose of meditation to transform our life from a normal human life to a more divine blissful life from a normal human life to a more blissful life that is the main purpose of meditation thank you so much for sharing that swami ji uh, moving on to our questions because there is just a few more questions to go and time is running fast but i just wanted to ask you these questions as they have been presented to us by the viewers um can you tell us uh, something about osho's new sanyas movement and how one can take this initiation so can you tell us more about that movement swami ji please okay in very short previously sanyas meant renunciation yes renunciation of home renunciation of family and society and going to mountain or a hill or jungle living in a cave that was thought as sanyas renunciation osho uh -huh. has changed it completely he says not renunciation but celebration of life live life with love with awareness with sensitivity with meditation so you don't have to renounce your family your job your shop your factory your office just be responsible continue all your responsibility yes add one more extra responsibility that is okay. be meditative okay mm. that's a very good very good answer be meditative that's good thank you so much for that and uh, you know in this very present time um in fact osho had said before that my sanyasins has two wings love and meditation we've heard about meditation from you a lot become meditative is what your your mission is please tell us about love in osho's vision what is Not love only we think of love as a relation with someone we always think of love in relation with someone when osho says love or jesus christ says love is god they mean something else that love is not a relation with someone that love is the quality of being it has nothing to do with the other but something to do with me can i be loving in an empty room where nobody else is present if i can be loving that is the real love it is not dependent on the other of course such a person will be loving to others as well but his love is not dependent on other he is loving this is his own quality it is just like fragrance spreads from a flower or light rays radiate from a lamp it is their quality the flower is not waiting for someone to come maybe a painter or a poet will come then i will give the fragrance so he can 
write a poem on me or make a painting of me. No, nothing like that. It is blooming, it has blossomed, and the fragrance is spreading, even if nobody is there. So this kind of loving quality, this is what meant by Osho as love. Wow, what a nice description of what love is. Thank you, Swamiji, for sharing that with us also. Um, I have a couple more questions, if you don't mind. Is that okay with you, Swamiji? If it is fine with your time schedule, no problem with me. <laughs> Perfect. We, we still have about five minutes to answer these two questions, which would be great. Swamiji, um, in this present time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are all fearing and we are very, very uncertain about what the future holds. Is there anything that can be done to stay calm and relaxed in our mind? Because this mind is like a monkey, it's jumping in, we are worried, we are fear, we are mm. anxious. Is there anything that can be done for that? Yes, there is one thing which everybody can do, and Tell that it. is when you go in meditation, you realize your consciousness as something eternal, okay. immortal soul, and then all fear of death disappears. And every fear is rooted in death. Remember, the death of fear is the basic fear. All other anxieties and apprehensions, they are just outcome branches of the same fear. So once we realize ourselves as immortal soul, then fear disappears and we become calm and quiet. It doesn't matter what is happening outside. Nothing happens to us. We become unaffected. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that is so nice. Just to get rid of fear and anxiety and uncertainty, we can practice such a useful method of meditation. Swamiji, Swamiji, thank you for that. And last but not the least, the viewers would love to hear your message. Ladies and gentlemen, all the questions that have been answered so far are absolutely invaluable. The answers are such amazing. But this is the golden jackpot answer and a golden jackpot question that I'm going to pose to Swamiji so that we can get the best message. Swamiji, can you give us some message which is inspirational, motivational for each one of us in different walks of life? This is a huge audience that is global. They would love to hear your message for as an each individual is getting. Swamiji, Swamiji, the floor is all yours. Okay, let us make a determination, a strong will, that we will use this life opportunity to its fullest. We will become aware, sensitive, loving, and finally, before death comes, we should realize our deathless consciousness. This should be the target the final target in everybody's life. It doesn't matter when death will happen, tomorrow or after 10 years or after 50 years, but it is bound to come one day or other day. So let us be prepared. And it's good that in such critical times of pandemic, everything has become uncertain. Nobody knows we will be here tomorrow or not. So let us use this situation of danger and fear as a inspiration and motivation towards spiritual growth. This is my message. Thank you, Dr. Lalitji. Oh my God, that is such a strong, inspiring and a powerful message. It is like a tornado, a cannonball that has been shot out into the globe for people to get that message. Swamiji, that is so, so nice of you to give us that message. Once again, a humble thank you to you. Ladies and gentlemen, you might want to rewind this when you go back onto the Facebook. You might want to just take that cursor back 
and say, let me listen to this message again, please do so. It's a powerful message. It's a very, very powerful message for all of us moving into a very, very uncertain future. Have that strong will, strong determination, according to Swamiji's words. So Swamiji, thank you so, so very much on behalf of the Lohana Mahajan, on Meena Ben and myself. However, before we move on to the next section of our rapid fire round, which is a very popular round on the Minla Zoom sessions, Swamiji, we have a little, little, little surprise for you. Something that you are unaware of. And ladies and gentlemen, please open your videos for this particular session. It's only going to take about a minute to do this. And we are, according to Meena Ben and myself, Swamiji's birthday comes on the 17th of June. So all of us want to give Swamiji a very happy birthday. Meena Ben is already with her garland to garland of Swamiji. Meena Ben, unmute yourself and can you spotlight yourself too? Thank you. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday you. to you, Swamiji. Happy birthday to you. Happy Thank birthday, you. Thank birthday you. Swamiji. Swamiji. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Swamiji, my old golfer is here. <laughs> I see Mr. Kagram. Hi, hello to everybody. Thank you. Swamiji, have a happy birthday on the 17th of June, and we all wish you all the best, and may this message of Osho spread globally to every doorstep. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very popular session on the Minla Zoom sessions where our guest speaker participates in a rapid fire round with us. These questions are about 26 questions today, and they are going to be answered, uh, asked very quickly and answered also very, very promptly. So, Swamiji, welcome to the Zoom session on Minla rapid fire round is that okay with you swamiji yes perfectly fine i'm ready perfectly fine so here we go on the very first question swamiji which religion do you belong to i don't belong to any religion or sect all religions belong to me why should i be miser to choose or select only one when there are so many diamonds why not get all of them? So all the treasures are mine. I don't belong to any sect. All sects belong to me. Thank you. Why did you leave the medical profession? I left the medical profession to get a bigger responsibility that is to spread meditation. Meditation is the medicine of the soul. So as people are becoming more and more wealthy. They are also becoming physically healthy, but the mental diseases are becoming more. So the physical problems are becoming less with the modern medical science, but mental problems, psychological problems are increasing. So meditation is more needed today. So I have dropped a, response, a small responsibility and I have taken up a bigger responsibility. Thank you. How did Osho write 650 books in such a short lifespan? In fact, he didn't write books. He spoke spontaneously. All his spoken words are typed and printed in form of books. No editing, no change has done to what he has said. So he used to speak one and a half hour in the morning, one and a half hour in the evening. This was his daily practice. So. After every 10th day, there was a new book. Thank you. After so many books of Osho, which book do you recommend? You can start Osho from everywhere, from anywhere. It doesn't matter. You start listening to him or reading him from anywhere. It is just like you can taste the ocean from anywhere. It is salty, the same taste. Similarly, you can read Osho from anywhere. So I will not recommend any particular title. Okay, thank you. Why was Osho later called Bhagavan? He was called Bhagwan because this word means 
the blessed one remember there are many different meanings in different cultures hindus and others call bhagwan as the one who created the world the srashta but in jainism and buddhism bhagwan means the blessed one the one who has experienced the bliss inside that is bhagwan mahavira and buddha both were atheists but they were called bhagwan similarly osho was called bhagwan thank you how do you control anger quickly very quickly just stop your hold breath for few seconds don't pay attention to the person who is you think is the cause of anger but go within feel yourself and then for 2 minutes take slow deep breaths and you will be out of anger thank you what is the meaning of life life has no meaning it is just an empty canvas we can color whatever we like we are free to make it ugly or beautiful as we wish so let us thank life it has no ready made meaning it is not a painting it is empty canvas and we are free to paint whatever we like thank you is social media good or bad good for the people who are running the social media it is their business and bad for people who are over using it <laughs> if we are intelligent we can use everything in a good way in a useful way if we are not wise then everything becomes bad so you can see around people are using in a bad manner sure what is the ultimate goal uh, swami ji the ultimate goal of a human life ultimate goal of life is to transform oneself from an ordinary human to a divine being we can also become like buddha and mahavira and jesus christ and osho everybody has that potentiality we have to actualize our potential swami ji <laughs> thank you for that answer i have another question if i may ask you this swami sure. ji why do you have a long white beard <laughs> i have not grown it it has become long on its own and the white color is also naturally happened i have i have done nothing to it but you don't have beard no so you have done something i may ask you sir why did you shave your beard because i you have to answer your hair <laughs> counter question because i don't like facial hair that's why <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's my answer <laughs> okay swami ji um how useful is yoga for spiritual growth it depends what meaning you take from yoga there are eight limbs of yoga it is called ashtang yoga so first five limbs are just from outside as if you are climbing the ladder the real temple is the last three dharana dhyan samadhi most of the people take physical exercises which are like physiotherapy as yoga that cannot take you to the spiritual temple it may give you a healthy body but not the experience of consciousness so the real yoga is dharana dhyan samadhi if you consider that then it is very useful if you just consider yogasan and pranayam as yoga then it is as good as physiotherapy nothing more thank you swami ji do you have anything to say about god thanks god the god does not exist as a person he has no personality but there is a quality the quality of divineness so osho has coined a new word he says there is no god but there is godliness all over the existence inside as well as outside so god is not a personality but a quality which each one of can experience thank you for that answer what could be the best gift of existence to anyone 
What we get without asking is a gift. What we get by asking is called begging. We have got this life without our asking. We had not applied in some government or God's office that I want to be born on this planet Earth. We are just here without asking. This means this life is a gift. And what else could be more valuable and wonderful gift than this life? Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Swamiji, I have heard that you do not consider death as an enemy. Why? Just imagine if a car manufacturer offers to exchange your old car and gives you a brand new car, new model, would you call that car manufacturer an enemy? Or you will be happy and thankful to it. That's what the nature is doing to us. When our old body becomes sick and not able to survive anymore, the nature says, okay, give it back. We will give you a new model. You will be born again as a fresh baby. Enjoy life again. So what is wrong in it? The death is not our enemy, but is a friend. And Osho has taught us the art of living plus art of dying as well. Death as a celebration. And that can happen only if our life has become celebration. Okay. Thank you. That's a very wonderful answer. Uh, next question, Swamiji. What do you think about the politicians in today's world? A bit of a contradictory question, but let's see. Dr. Lilithji, there are so many beautiful things in the life to contemplate. I don't have time to think about politicians. <laughs> okay. Next question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Swamiji, <laughs> why do you often tell jokes in your spiritual discourses? Because when you've heard you're always joking and saying wonderful jokes, why do you do that? Because most of the religious people are so serious. I don't want to make them more serious. Osho <laughs> says seriousness is a spiritual disease. So joke is the remedy of this disease. So when I say something funny, people start laughing. And remember, when you laugh, the thought process in the mind stops. For a moment, you are in a witnessing consciousness. And Osho is the first person who started this laughing meditation. Ah. So I'm using the same technique. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. I think that's a great idea. Would you like to share a joke right now? One joke? I'm not so miser. I will, if I tell joke, I will tell at least three jokes, okay? Chalo, aapki, aapki Ready? Joke kolo. No problem. A depressed husband said, fighting with the wife, I cannot live with you one day. Not even a moment now. Now I will hang myself with the ceiling fan using your sari as a rope. The <laughs> wife said, no, 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 please don't do that. Have mercy on me. Don't waste my new sari, which is worth 10,000 rupees. <laughs> oh, nobody's laughing. <laughs> okay, we are all laughing. sari is more valuable. <laughs> One mad person in a mad house was treated and after five years, he became healthy. Now he was getting discharged. The patient said, doctor, you have cured me, but I'm not happy. Doctor said, why? Why you are not happy? You are perfectly cured. The patient says, till yesterday, I was Narendra Modi. And now today I'm nobody. Nice and the third joke, Okay. Two girls were sitting and talking amongst themselves. Suddenly one of them caught sight of the other's hand. She said, hey, you are wearing the wedding ring on the wrong finger. The other girl replied, yes, I know. But do you know that I have married the wrong man? <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful, Swamiji. Swamiji, thank you so much for sharing those jokes with us. Um, and absolutely makes it a very lighthearted uh, session today. Everybody is having fun. And as you said, laughing creates a different chemistry in your body and makes you forget everything. So thank you for sharing that. Last question on the rapid fire round is how did you find Dr. Lalit Soda's rapid fire round? <laughs> Very funny, enjoying, celebrating. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank and I would like to mention that uh, 
three months ago, I have published few e-books which are available on Amazon, joke books. The one is, Tum Aaj Mere Sang Haslo. These are in Hindi. Tum Aaj Mere Sang Haslo. The second one is, Jeevan Hasne Hasane Ka Aosar. And the third one is, Haasya Phul Jadiya, Mulla Nasruddin Ke Prerna Dai Latif Hai. Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you made the notes of these three books that uh, Swamiji has uh, published. Uh, and please get them, obviously, because one big meaning of laughter is laughter yoga that was actually started with uh, uh, our Bhagwan Rajneesh Oshoji. So thank you very much for participating in the rapid fire round, Swamiji. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It was a wonderful game to play. We got some wonderful insight from the answers to, your, uh, to the questions we asked. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Dr. Lalitji, Meenaji, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What we would like to do now, Swamiji, is we would like to move the program forward to our secretary from the Lohana Mahajan Mandal Kisumu, uh, our uh, Mr. Navnit Bhai Rajdev, to say a vote of thanks on behalf of the community. Mr. Navnit Bhai Rajdev is a very good social worker, always there available for the community to serve. And he is a server, is what we would call him. Now, Nidbai, welcome. And on behalf of Lohana Mahajan Mandal, we'd like you to say a few words to Swamiji, please. Thank you, Lalit Bhai. Jai Sri Krishna and Jai Osho to all. And birthday wishes to Swamiji. It is great to see such a wonderful turnout from all over the country and all over globally. On behalf of Sri Lohana Majan Mandal and its members, I would firstly like to pass my heartfelt thanks to Swamiji <laughs> Shailendra Ji. Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you. We are very grateful that you took out your valuable time to share this inspirational wisdom with us. We hope that we can host you again in the future, that too in person if possible. Secondly, thank you Dr. Lalitbhai and Minaven for organizing this session and hosting it wonderfully. It is always a pleasure working with you on such initiatives. Finally, thank you all for joining this session and we hope to see you at our next event. I wish that everyone staying safe and keeping safe. Jai Shri Krishna, Jai Jalaram. Thank you, Jai Osho. Thank you, Navnit Bhai. Thank you very much for that wonderful word of thanks. And Swamiji, until and unless our lovely Meena Ben doesn't say a word of thanks, the Minla Zoom session, session doesn't come to an end. So I'm going to request our super lady to say a word of thanks to yourself, Swamiji. Meena thank, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Lalit. I was so engrossed in listening to his best talk ever forgot to write what I have to tell. <laughs> so, okay. This is when we met in 2005 in Rishikesh and that is your signature. Yes. And you have written Shukriya, have everlasting and then you have written his blessings. You did this, his blessings. I remember that. 16 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were in the same place where there was an arti going on. Yes. And then you, uh, after the arti, you were, we all were dancing. Yeah. So, um, thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is my pleasant and humble duty to end the session with the heartiest thank you to all. On behalf of Lalit, my cute cousin, and myself, we like to thank Lohana Majan Nairobi, Chairman Bimal Kantaria, and Secretary Navnit Bhai for joining us and supporting us. This is not the first time he they have been with us even before. Thank you all who have joined live on Facebook and in our Zoom session. Our special sincere thank to my friend, Dr. Mukesh Patra, who has introduced Swamiji, his friend, to me. And Mukeshji, I love your singing. Keep singing, <laughs> Rapiti. 
it takes us to godhead Sina, if you. dr batra is there could you spotlight him please ah uh, yes uh, we can check it out i think so, I mean, was... Swamiji, this was a wonderful session so nice to have connected with you and learned a lot about the osho philosophy about the books and once again thanks to the osho fragrance team oh dr batra if you can unmute yourself please oh. dr batra is a wonderful super gentleman the world renowned homeopath who is a, an amazing personality not just as a homeopath as an entrepreneur but an amazing human being who always wants to connect and make people connect and that is our dr batra welcome on the zoom session with minla dr batra would you like to say a few words to our dear friend swami ji please thank you lalit and thank you meena ben for this wonderful occasion and thank you swami ji for having agreed to come on this show I'm, i can i can tell you that it was absolutely fabulous and we are all blessed so thank you for your blessings and thank you for for being there and may all of us stay blessed dr mukesh ji se do lines hone koi geet ki ha we sing few lines yes. चल के तुझे मैं लेके चलू एक ऐसे गगन के तले जहां गम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यारी प्यार पले वाह एक ऐसे गगन के तले वाह वाह ग्रेट ऐसे गगन के तले ek aise gagan ke tale i'm sure that's what swami ji wishes for all of us so <laughs> yes, ye yes. aapke charno mein main is uh, koi maine present kiya thank you very much for mm-hmm. being with us really honored okay good night to everyone namaste thank, thank you good night to everybody ladies and no i have thanked swami ji yet thank you very much swami ji okay um, you have promised that amrati ji will come next time your wife uh, sure and, next time yes. she will also come and, and join no her bhaja let me tell you that's the lady i was looking for you can decide the date with moksha okay we okay. will send those thank you thank you very much for today's have... session mina ben just one minute ladies and gentlemen before everybody disappears we have an amazing zoom session coming up in two weeks time on the 26th with a dr mickey matha if you want to get mickey mized join us on dr mickey's session on the 26th of june saturday london time is 3:30 india time is 8 o'clock and kenya time is 5 o'clock this is one session swami ji has inspired us in uh, the mind and the meditation and the osho philosophy we've got a super doctor coming up and enlightening us and getting us mechimized in his philosophy so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much mina ben the floor is all yours and can't end my thank you without saying big thank you to you lalit oh doctor <laughs> and thank you all thank you eli thank you asandi sana habari ya jioni koheri thank you very much thank you very much oh show <laughs>